Coming up on Colonial Sports Center. Men's basketball is in a battle for first place in the NEC as they take on the Wagner Seahawks on Sunday. And we preview men's lacrosse as our own Shayla Morris sits down with one of their players as they look forward to a brand new season. Coming up on Colonial Sports Center. Welcome to Colonial Sports Center, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's a Logan and Sam episode. That's right, we've taken over the studio down here in Colonial Sports Center. And Sam, I think we're ready for a great day. We've got some great sports to recap and show the highlights, and I think it's going to be a great episode. That's right, Logan. It's going to be legendary. So watch out, Greg and David, because it's the Logan and Sam era here on Colonial Sports Center. But why don't we just kick off the show right? All right, we're well, take we're the first start one. Off, you know what? Coming in right now, just an hour ago, Robert Morris finished playing Mount St. Mary's at PPG Paints Arena. The Colonials Mountaineers, unfortunately, the Colonials falling 67 to 42. One of their worst losses of the season. Really overall struggle for the Colonials as the highest scores were Leandre Washington and Deshaun Burke with 11 points apiece. The Colonials fell behind 31 to 4 early and just were never able to really climb back in this one. And this, this loss drops them to fourth. In the NEC, they're going to be tied with Fairleigh Dickinson in the conference. Hopefully, Robert Morris can turn this around in the upcoming weekend. Now, the men's basketball team took on Sacred Heart this past weekend. Let's see what happened in the first game of that weekend. But the Colonials, Pioneers, men's basketball. Right out of the gate, Deshaun Burke gets the two and draws the foul. He would end up being the leading scorer of the game. Great pass there under the hoop to Joseph Lopez. 8.8 .8 rebounds for him and the Pioneers. Here we go with Leandre Washington. A basket. He's going to whoop, whoop, whoop. Check out a couple guys and put another layup right there. He'll be the second leading scorer in this one as we get into the second half. We see a backwards pass there by John Williams. He'll find Matty McConnell. But Sacred Heart comes right back on the breakaway. Great layup to tie things up. Deshaun. Deshaun Burke there ties it up, but Kobe Thomas takes it away. And he comes down with the slam. And Robert Morris will finish this one 64 to 56. They remain near the top of the NEC Conference. In the game, Kobe Thomas had 11 rebounds. While the leading scores for Robert Morris were Deshaun Burke with 17, and Matt and Leandre Washington with 11. Washington has been on a tear lately, scoring at least 10 points in six of his last seven games. The Robert Morris Colonials went into PBG Paints Arena on Sunday, tied for first place in the conference with none other than their opponent, the Wagner Seahawks. These teams go into battle sporting the top two defenses in the NEC. Expect a little bit of a defensive battle here. And you're going to start off with Deshaun Burke on the rebound. And watch this pass out to Leandre Washington. He's going to step back. And here's the three. He was 71% from three-pointers on the day. Leandre Washington, he had a day. But right here, JoJo Cooper. And he says, get back, JoJo. And he brings in the layup right there. Great steal, JoJo with 17 points and nine rebounds on the day. But Kobe Thomas, probably the most electric player in Moon Township with the slam right there. Robert Morris with the 10-point lead going into the half. That one wasn't going to last long here. And you're going to see Blake Francis here with the three-pointer starting to climb back here. Actually, Wagner were going an 11-0 run. And from there, they never really looked back. Robert Morris only scoring 22 points. And you're going to see Matty McConnell send this one out and... It's going to end up to Leandre Washington. McConnell and Washington had 18 of the Colonials, 22 points in the second half. The rest of the team, ice cold. Deshaun Burke, one of the team stars, uh, stars, only two points. And after an impressive first half, the Colonials were unable to answer the call for the final 20 minutes, shooting a paltry 18% from the floor in the second half and 60% from the free throw line. The Colonials would still maintain second place in the conference, but with two losses against the Seahawks, it would be Wagner holding the tiebreaker. And we're going to take a look at the NEC. And now we'll go into women's basketball. Sorry about that, Sam. But the women's basketball team did play a couple games this past weekend. And the first one was they took on Bryant as they look to stay undefeated in conference play. Let's jump right into the highlights of that one. Logan, we got the hottest team in the NEC right now. RMU women's basketball. Every player on that team, phenomenal. We see the Colonials and Bryant is Bryant is actually going to jump out to an early lead here. You saw a 9-2 at one point, but 
You can't sleep on those Colonials. You see a layup there. They have the lead all of a sudden at the end of the first quarter. And now we get into the second one, and the Colonials are going to come right back. We see a three-pointer, two-pointer at the top of the key. And now all of a sudden, they have a 32-20 to 20 lead with the end of the second. Now we get into the third corner. Colonials still leading by 15 now. See a three, a three. Oh. What is amazing? Another three. They can't be stopped. They just hit them one after the other. As we get to the end of the third quarter and we go into the fourth, 60 to 39 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And the women's team is going to end up going on to defeat Bryant by a score of 72 to 49. The leading scorer in the game was Minoka Ikamatsu as she had 16 points. Also scoring double digits for Robert Morris for Megan Callahan and Jocelyn Jones who each had 12 and Megan Smith with 10. The fiery hot women's basketball team appears to be unstoppable. Their brick wall of a defense is ranked the 17th best in the entire country and ESPN Bracketology has Charlie Biscalia's squad as a 15 seed which would be a first for the program. Their latest opponent was the Central Connecticut State Blue Devil, who came in rocking a 2-16 record, the second worst team in the conference. They're going to start off here. Kiana Patterson with the bucket. That was going to be one of the two she made all night, Logan. And here come the Colonials here. They're going to keep firing back and forth shots here, but Central Connecticut staying tight through the first 10 minutes of play. And then Robert Morris decided they're going to kick it into gear. Jocelyn Jones, she misses the first one, but she comes back with the layup there. And then you're going to see... Jocelyn Jones with the three-point shot right here. That's going to be only, that's her five for the night. She was quiet, but it didn't matter because the rest of that team, Logan, unstoppable. They just, just like kept the Bryant game, they fell behind a little bit early. So they stayed close, and they got hot from the threes, and they pulled away. And at the center of it all, Megan Smith, she had 22 points. Astounding here. And you're going to go into the fourth quarter. This is when the freshmen take over. You're going to see Megan Callahan. You're going to see Hanoka Ikan. Nina, Gustin, everyone getting in the action. Callahan with 11, Ikamatsu, one of the best shooters in the NEC. She finished with eight points on the day. And Robert Morris would go put the Blue Devils away. 66 to 47. The Colonials defense was ultimately too much to handle. And again, Robert Morris here, that is their ninth in a row. And they are going to remain undefeated in conference play. Now, Sam mentioned that the Colonials have been, you know, more than hot lately as they've won 9-0 and undefeated in the conference rankings. In fact, they've been ranked for the first time in a mid-major poll. It was just the second time in history and the first time since 2011. As we take a look at College Insiders, women's mid-majors, Colonials right there at number 24, and that's partly due to what a phenomenal defense when they're top 15 in both scoring uh, scoring defense and shooting percentage and of course Sam mentioned the hot the hot shot freshman that is Hinoka Ikamatsu who is shooting 49.8 percent from the three-point line that is good for second in the entire country and we talked about the phenomenal play that she's had in the NEC but in second in the whole country and Sam, I mean, that's got to be something that's just been a huge factor in how the offense of the Colonials uh, has really taken off here in this one. Yeah, Logan, you're right. I mean, the team is absolutely unstoppable right now. And right now, their biggest challenge this weekend, Saturday, against St. Francis. They win that. They're looking to be undefeated in conference play. But we're going to send it to Shayla Morris, who's there with our special guest right now. Shayla, who do you got with you? Hi everyone, I have with me today Adrian Torek Oric, who is a senior on our men's lacrosse team. How are you doing, Adrian? Well, thank you. How are you? Good. So, stay tuned on Colonial Sports Center as we're going to talk with Adrian and we're going to go to Sam and Logan as they're going to talk about men's hockey this past weekend. They call me Maxi, but I prefer a tripod. I was your above average four legged homie and then wham bam minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Here at Robert Morris University, we pride ourselves at the experience that our students gain while they're actively learning in the classroom. Some even come back to share that knowledge with new students. 
I never dreamed that I'd be back here. I'm having so much fun. I'm doing a lot of what I was trained to do and what I went to school for. The Colonial Sports Network is a great opportunity for students to learn real job skills in sports programming. And to be able to see what the students want to make of it because it can be anything that they want. I love being here, seeing students, seeing myself in the students that work with me and I'm really blessed to have so much talent to work with. It's really amazing to be able to see students become successful after Rappaport. It's really cool. Join the Colonial Sports Network team and expand your future today. Hey, let's check out this park. That's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Today, we're going to interview Air Adrian Twerk Oren on the Lens Lacrosse team. How are you? Phenomenal. Good. So, since your freshman year, you consistently managed to be one of the top five scorers on your team in the NEC, and what's that like for you? Um, I, I think it's, you know, it means the world to me to be able to go out there and be successful. Obviously, you know, we work hard day in and day out to, you know, put the ball in the back of the net. But ultimately, I wouldn't be able to do that with any of my, you know, my teammates. I've been blessed. You know, I've played alongside a lot of phenomenal players, and I think I owe a lot of my success to them. And what motivates you to strive for the success in your career? Because it's not easy to go out there every season and be a consistently a top scorer. Well, so I think, you know, one of our team models is earn it every day. And, you know, throughout the years that I've, you know, that I've been on the team, Right? We've always talked about this thing, trying to get 1% better every day. And I think it's just constantly, you know, never be satisfied with you know, where you are. Don't get complacent, just constantly tr strive to you know, push, it, push a little bit harder and you know, be a little bit better. Which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so this year you're a senior on the cross team, a final season. Mm -hmm. So what would freshman Adrian tell senior Adrian now? Freshman Adrian, tell senior Adrian now. Um, just keep, you know, trust the process, keep working hard, right? And I think just you know, stay true to it, enjoy it, and you know, ex enjoy every experience that you have because before you know it, you know, the dates start winding <laughs> down and you know, it's, that's, that's pretty much it. Just enjoy every moment. You know, don't take anything for granted. And what's it feel like to be going into your final senior season? What hopes do you have for this season, it being your last one? It's exciting. You know, I think we returned a lot of phenomenal players, right? You know, a lot of the guys you know, were, were teaming with opportunity, and I think that that's something that a lot of guys Know, are, are really grasping and you know, we, we have that opportunity to really go and make, make a splash in NEC but we also get that first NCAA berth which you know, this program hasn't had before so I think it's just continue on and you know, just keep trying to get better. And the NCAA berth is something that has consistently haunted this team so what are you going to do to try and change that this season? No, I think we have a, like I said we have a great group of guys who are really been trusting the process and you know if, when we started off we have a big senior class and we started off right our our first season was we went three and eleven, only three wins. Whereas last year I think we were nine and seven. So we've constantly been, you know, you know, setting the bar just a little bit higher, and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, climb right over it. And is there anyone that we're not expecting to see come out and perform as well this season? Someone that's kind of like a quiet player, but we're expecting to make it big this year. I think you know, all of our freshmen are talented. A lot of the sophomores that are returning, right? Guys that have built their game in the off season. You know, in the fall, and I think a lot of the younger guys have really shown a lot of improvement. And you know, whether it be the youngest guy or the oldest guy on our team, all the guys have gotten better. So I think you know, just keep an eye on us because you know we're the <laughs> underdogs, and you know, hopefully, like I said, we'll be making a big splash this season. And this team has depth in offensive propositions. So what do players like Ryan Smith and Tyler Gibson and many more? How are they going to help you progress this season into the NCAA tournament? Like we said, right? Um, you know. We try and get that you know, 1% earn it every day. I think those guys are all key players that, that add a lot of layers to our offense. You know, we have a lot of guys that are on the defense as well, like Zach Bryan, Zach Christensen, uh, you know, Will Ewing, a lot of returners. And offensively, like I said, right, the more, the more players that we can have play a game keeps us fresh you know, while we wear down the defense and it just gives us you know, all the more opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net and be successful. Great. So do you have any plans for lacrosse after you graduate this year? 
Um, I'm looking to play senior. So well, I, well, I'm from Toronto, so <laughs> box across is a big thing for us. So hopefully, moving forward, I'll be able to continue playing senior A and you know, maybe maybe apply for the NLL or MLL draft. But who, who knows from there? Right? I want to get through the season first. That's great. Well, thank you for coming on with awesome. us today. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Of course. So we're going to throw back to Sam and Logan, who are going to go over men's hockey. Thank you, Shayla and Adrian. And but we're going to move on to hockey now with the Atlantic Hockey Conference standings tightening up. The Colonials took on AIC in a two-game set. Let's get right into the first one right now. Unfortunately for the Colonials, they would drop the first of two against AIC. They score three to one. In the game, Jacob Coleman would score the only goal for Robert Morris. Al Morris fell behind two to nothing early and failed to recover. Francis Marat had just 17 saves in the entire game. Brady Ferguson and the men's hockey team came into their weekend finale with the Yellow Jackets not only searching for the weekend split, but to avoid the loss, they could potentially drop Robert Morris two places to sixth in the conference. It was Francis Marat to start net for the Colonials, but he wouldn't last for long. After a quick two-goal deficit for the Colonials, Derek Schooley and his squad came back firing with four straight goals from four different players. Alex Tange would add the power play dagger with just 41 seconds, and the Colonials would hold tight to their fourth place positioning in the conference, while the Yellow Jackets would drop to sixth in the conference. We're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about upcoming games and look at what was an exciting week in Robert Morris Athletics. Stay tuned. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden host defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. The special edition Logan and Sam episode is we get right into women's hockey now. Is you know women's hockey took on Penn State in a two-game set this past weekend. Let's look and find out what happened in the first game on Friday. Colonials, Nittany Lions coming out. It's fight night as they battle for the puck in the corner. Robin Morris is going to come away with it and is going to set up the first goal for Kirsten Welsh. Welsh, one of the top players for the Colonials, as she has been really since she entered the, uh, joined the team. As we get now into the second period, well, Robert Morris was up one. Robert Morris was up one to nothing, and we're going to see another goal here by Robert Morris with Natalie. Frazier, but it's going to be overturned, but the Colonials are going to come out and shot there by Kirsten Welsh, her second one of the game, and the second one for the Colonials after the overturned goal by Frazier. Now we get into the Robin Morris again, Nittany Lions going to come right back and they're going to put one on the board. All of a sudden, they're on down one. We've got a whole new game. 
be a very, very quick goal into the third period. Here we go, the Nittany Lions are going to bring the puck up the ice. And one more shot, one more goal, and that will tie everything up. Two to two, Kirsten Welsh with two goals for Robert Morris. Elijah Milne Price made 19 saves in the contest for giving up two goals. Robert Morris did manage to outshoot Penn State 29 to 21 in the game. Army women's hockey has now tied the Nittany Lions of Penn State in all three of their matchups this season. The team has battled with RMU all season, and as the battle heads into its finale, these two foes are both looking for their first win in the final game of the season series. Who will claim victorious in this one? We will see, and it was the annual teddy bear toss here in the Skate for the Cure weekend at the Colonials Arena. And who's going to send it in? None other than Amber Rennie off the off the tip, off the shot from Kirsten Welsh there, and Welsh having a game, but it was Rennie who sent that one. You'll you'll hear more from Welsh later as the teddy bears rain. Teddy on bear the flying, ice. teddy bears go flying on the ice, and all those teddy bears would end up going to the UPMC Children's Center. But we're gonna keep going here. Penn State comes right back. Kelsey Crow sends that one in to tie it up, and off the deflection, off the shot from Brooke Madsen here. But then, third period here, you're gonna see. Kirsten Welsh sends a rocket, and that will be the deciding goal here. Four to two was your final score in this one. And despite not having Brittany Howard for their second straight game, RMU would end the weekend with their first win of the season against the Nittany Lions. Kirsten Welsh would add one goal and two assists to her impressive weekend. That's saw her put up two goals the night before, bringing her total to five points. And we're going to take a look at the standings here. And with the win, Robert Morris would remain tied for first place with Mercy Earth with 21 points as the two teams head for a crash course on the second to last weekend of the season on February 16th. That could decide who wins the conference. Not too far behind is the Syracuse Orange as it appears to be a three-man race for the conference championship as we enter the final month of the regular season. Logan, very exciting here. Robert Morris though in more of a battle than they expect. Of course, I mean, that collision course, that's going to be a game to watch for the year with Mercyhurst. I mean, those two teams, that's the game that's going to decide the conference, it looks like. But moving on to some more exciting news, Robert Morris inducted 10 former athletes into the RMU Athletic Hall of Fame. The class of 2017 brings membership in the RMU Athletic Hall of Fame to 127 individuals in two teams. Some notables in this, in this class include Alex DeMichael, who has compiled 330 career tackle, uh, tackles, which ranks second all-time in program history. He also set a single-season school record for tackles with 116, a total that was passed in 2013. And Betsy Pusker, who is the veteran being inducted into the Hall of Fame, as she was in 1985 and 1986, she averaged a double-double with 17.8 points and 10 and a half rebounds and 91 steals in just 28 games. That average of 3.3 points per game is tied for second in the RU, RMU single season record book. Robert Morris has completed their fifth and sixth hiring since almost the entire staff left the team at the beginning of January. Rafael Tolentino, a former high school coach in Orlando, Florida, will serve as the team's new defensive line coach, while Delbert Tyler, a former graduate assistant at Eastern Michigan, will serve as his assistant defensive line coach. Dial Tyler was a former linebacker at Hampton University, where he served under new RMU head coach Bernard Clark, who was the linebacker's coach at the time, whereas Tolentino served in the United States Air Force before he began his coaching career. There, he earned the Good Conduct and Air Force Commendation Medals. Clark believes that Tolentino's military experience and Tyler's success at linebacker will provide valuable insight for the team. And we're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, Logan, we're getting towards the end of the Logan and Sam CSC Spectacular. But we're not done yet. What do we got coming up? Oh, we got all the games coming up, and we got more coming up. I mean, this episode, we talked about the Hall of Fame. This episode is going to go down the Logan and Sam episode of the Age for CS. And we got a video you're going to want to see. It's the week in Robert Morris Sports. All the excitement, all the best moments from this week in Robert Morris are going to come up. We're going to finish the show with a bang. Don't go anywhere. Colonial Sports Center coming right back. It appears these hot ashes are about to be done which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden host defense. Next, a thorough stir. 
then another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Sparks from dragon tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center, and as we head towards the end here, we're going to look at the upcoming game. What is coming to you in the next week of Robert Moore Sports? Some more excitement here. Let's take a look here. Friday, we start with some men's hockey. Early morning game, 10.30 in the morning as the men's hockey team battles the Pioneers of Sacred Heart. Yeah, it looks like the men's hockey is going to have to wake up for that one, 10.30 in the morning. I mean, you won't catch me going to a game like that, but you, you can always catch me <laughs> You can catch it on TV, hopefully I didn't see front row. You'll Robert see. Morris, you know, looking to get that win. Sacred Heart lower in the conference there in Atlantic Hockey, a big win for the Coneys. They try to maintain you know, a high standing in that conference. But then, Logan, what do we have on Saturday? A lot of action going on Saturday afternoon. Oh, we got four games on Saturday. We got men's basketball at 2 p.m., men's hockey at 2.05 p.m., women's basketball at 2 p.m., men's lacrosse, their first game of the year at 1 p.m. Sam, what game stands out to you in that pack? Well, you know what? The big game is women's basketball at St. Francis. You're talking about top two teams in the conference. Robert Morris, 9-0 in the NEC, St. Francis, 8-1 in the NEC. The only loss is to Robert Morris on a buzzer beater. Megan Smith sent the home fans home going crazy with an unbelievable shot there. Robert Morris is looking for that big win, and that win there would get them and really propel them into a conference championship potentially. Of course, but you know, enough about the upcoming schedule. Why don't we show you all what the week that was in Robert Morris sports. difficulties but guess what we did show you what week this was with all of the highlights covers that we had in the Sam and Logan special and you know what this is a once in a lifetime thing you're you're seeing the two of us going at it and <laughs> what an exciting week that was for us here Logan and Sam the spectacular but let's talk about some exciting Robert Moore sports coming up men's basketball they took the loss to Mount St. Mary's Logan you're the men's basketball expert here. If you can follow him on RMU Century Media, a lot of great pieces there. What does Robert Morris need to do this weekend to get the win? Well, they need to start shooting better. They need to be a little bit more consistent. I mean, the team, you, you look at it, you know, they shot 60, above 60% from the three-point lines in their game against Wagner. Wagner, the best team in the conference, and, you know, it's starting to look, you know, they, they one of the best teams in conference. It's starting to look a little bit, you know, not close. But Robert Morris was up there, and they were dominating that first half. In the second half, 18.8% overall. So they're team good. that they need to be consistent. They can beat anyone when they're consistent. Their defense is second in the NC, NEC in points. Their offense is up there. You know, the team is one of the best teams that we have. You know, one stat that I keep throwing out there, four games in a row, first time since the 90s, Raul Moore scored 80 points 
consecutively. And their offense hasn't even been the strength of the team. It's been their defense. So they have a lot of youth. They're a team that can compete with anyone. They just need to be consistent. And you know what? We will have to wait and see what happens with Robert Morris men's basketball. And thank you, Logan. It's been a pleasure coming oh, on with you. It's always a pleasure. Hopefully it's always they don't a kick pleasure. us off after this show. But thank you so much for tuning in. You can catch more Colonial Sports Center with Greg and David next week here.